something with an alternate cost for sure. All right, well, there are the two players on your left. Looks like we have the rug countertop mirror match. Uh, David Thomas on uh, on the left playing rug countertop versus Jerry Thomas on the right playing, or actually Jer David Thomas isn't playing rug countertop. He's just playing rug, no countertop. Uh, on your left, David Thomas with rug. On your right, Jerry Thompson won the last match playing rug countertop. It's here again. And a rematch from the Swiss. I'm sure David Thomas wants some revenge for his only Swiss loss. Yeah. David, of course, made top four of the standard open, too, looking to also get further than he did last time around. Definitely. I'm sure he wants to hoist a trophy. Jerry would love to add to the mantle, which I'm sure has a lot of trophies. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, of course, starts the games.com ringer. Yep, multiple Grand Prix champion as well. Jerry yeah, Thompson. yeah, he's not just a Star City Circuit battler. So, not sure who won the role, but Jerry seems to be content with his seven. David Thomas. Doing everything methodically as usual. Very good quality for a Magic player. Never make the dumb mistakes that way. Yeah, I was watching David play yesterday and Standard Open. We saw him a couple matches on camera too and is very, very deliberate in his plays. Looks like Jerry's going to crack a scalding tarn on the first turn. For a basic mountain because David is packing all four wastelands. So basics are going to be very important for Jerry in this match as wasteland is one of the best ways for David to get ahead. Yep, so Jerry cracks his scalding tarn for a Basic Mountain, like you said, David plays Tropical Island Passes, Jerry plays Basic Island Passes, so he yeah. had it naturally. Looks like there's a Counterbalance and a Dismember in Jerry's hand, yep. those are two of the cards I see. Those are the two cards we can see so far, and Jerry draws a Tarmogoyf, not sure if he has any more lands. No, Jerry just ships back on Island Mountain. Any land, even Grove of the Burnwells would be great for Jerry here. Yeah, and the Punching Fire Grove combo is going to be big. We saw... Uh, that'd be strong against David in uh, the earlier match in round two or three. Right. That just put him away, killed all his creatures, and then him. All right, well, let's see what happens. The thing about David's deck, though, it really punishes someone who stumbles. Has a lot of tempo-oriented cards like Stifle. Temporal Spring. Temporal, of course. Of course, Temporal Spring. Oh, and Wasteland comes down, facing uh, okay. down two basics. So now Jerry's going to try and play around that Wasteland as best he can, but he can really only play it, get around it to a fault. Right. No basic forests in the deck. And uh, Jerry cast Brainstorm. Jerry resolving his Brainstorm right now. Thinking about what to put back besides on two Punishing Fires. Gavin running to the bathroom real quick. He'll be right back. So it looks like Jerry did draw a Volcanic Island off that. Will be immediately wasted, I'm sure, by David Thomas, but he'll get his use out of it. Not sure whether he'll cast the counterbalance here. I have to imagine, yep, there it is. David cracking the Misty in response. Decides that counterbalance is worth fighting over. Maybe saw Jerry's quarterfinal match. Saw how good it was for him there. David fetching up Trop. Does have spell snares in his deck. He's very good against fighting counterbalance. And he does snare it. Jerry decides not to fight, puts it in his graveyard. And David draws a lightning bolt. Deploys Tarmogoyf. And a second. That's going to be a really quick clock for Jerry. Now Jerry has a dismember for one, but has to decide whether he wants to play around a potential daze or not. That's why he's thinking at the end of the turn here. Has to decide if he wants to use that three mana during his turn or not. And decides to use it, paying the 4 life, of course, dropping himself to 15. We'll see if David Thomas has the back-breaking days.
David Thomas's hand seems to be force of will, stifle, a red card, and a fourth unknown, but he chooses not to force of will it. Wisely, I think, as long as he has one Tarmogoyf, that's plenty. So looks like Jerry, eyeing the Vendillion click in his hand. Very constrained on mana, though, and he has to know that that Volcanic Island is not long for this world. So if he wants to cast that click, he has to do so right now. But chooses to dismember, potentially putting David Thomas to no creatures on the battlefield. And Punishing Fire attempts to finish the Goyf off, but David Force of Wills. Now, Jerry not having another Force is very key. David, uh, David draws. Taps says Tropical Island. Looking like he's got a Ponder he might use there. Serves in with his Tarmogoyf. Yep. And goes for Ponder afterward. Yep. Jerry drops to within two swings of that Tarmogoyf. And he's already used both of his dismembers, so he has no easy answer to that goyf. Now, we saw a Jerry take down David earlier in the tournament, but looks like David is the one who's got Jerry on the back foot here. No, and I can't imagine that David's going to let that volcanic island live another turn. No, yeah, that wasteland is going to go right there, especially because he has two wastelands now. I think, like you said earlier, the mana denial is a big deal in this matchup, and David Thomas' ability to hamstring Jerry's mana is huge. Definitely, and bam, there it goes. Yeah, down it goes indeed. David passes with a stifle ready for any potential fetch lands. But Jerry luckily draws a forest, a tropical island rather. Plays a Tarmogoyf. All right, well now he's got his own Tarmogoyf to block it with. Although David is, I think I still put David in the commanding position here. Definitely. He's got that lightning bolt, looks like if he has a kind of red source. Don't think he does, and David drawing his one life from oh, the loam. Dear. That's going to be backbreaking going long. Yeah, I don't know how Jerry's going to be able to beat loam wasteland. Right. I mean, he has so many non basic lands. The Jerry, all right, so t David dismembers Jerry's Goyf, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see the game over in the next couple turns, next turn or two, if David shows him this life from the loam. Yeah, Jerry's likely to scoop to the loam if it even gets that far. But now he has to choose whether or not he wants to loam or wasteland. I'd be well. Why don't you could loam and get your wasteland back and play it, and then wasteland. Right, right? has not has not played a land this turn after all. Yeah, I would just do that. All right, so a spell snare from Jerry T. Now Jerry's got Vendillion Click in his hand, which will allow him to take that loam away from David Thomas. Right, which is and gigantic. jump block if he so chooses. Jerry decides it's worth it to brainstorm. He feels like he's going to need a island in the top three, and he finds one, though no shuffle effect. We're definitely likely to see Jerry cast this Vendillion click here before he loses potentially both of his non-basic lands. Though either way, I think Jerry's fighting a losing battle here. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess if Jerry V clicks away that life loam, he'll be able to get back in a little bit. Suppose so. David Thomas might wait to dredge that loam until he has brainstorm or something, but no, he just does it right now, and I can't imagine Jerry doing anything other. But yeah, instantly right. slams that V click down. Oh, but David has stifle in his hand. Just stifle the V click trigger. Bam. And that is not good for Jerry Thompson. And David's going to loam back Wasteland Misty Rainforest. And going to Wasteland The Green Jerry. Source, I'm sure. Yeah, Wasteland's... Oh, no, plays the Misty. Whoa, that's really interesting. Not sure right? I agree with that. He's going to let Jerry have the chance to play a Jace. Yeah, if, if I were David, I would just instantly deny Jerry as many lands as he can. Right. Uh, acquire. 
but David decides to prioritize lightning bolting that click and attacking with the goif. Yeah, I just don't see, like, Dave's going to take three, but can he just lightning bolt the next turn? Right, I, I don't agree with that at all. David wants to get the click out of the way, though, so Jerry doesn't have the opportunity to chump. Oh, because we had our life totals wrong. Jerry was really at six uh, and not 11, so that's well, that, the game. That, and that does make a little more sense right. then, yes. <laughs> so Jerry... J Jerry down the first game, but he lost the first game last round, too. He did, also against David, I think. I think he lost game one against David. Yep, exactly. Well, here we go. Let me t tell you about your chance to win at sixmonthsofstarsofthegames.com premium right now. Hey, everybody. Uh, so the way this works, I'm going to ask you guys a question for the top eight. Uh, you're going to reply on Twitter using the hashtag SEG premium. You can see it right there, down there. There. <laughs> on the screen. Just make sure to include that in your tweet. Uh, if you answer the question correctly, we'll choose one person out of everyone who answered, and that person will win six months of StarCityGames.com Premium. It's great. Um, all the best articles on the planet, basically, about magic you can find at Star Pretty City. Much. The leading website, without yeah. a doubt. And uh, we'll choose one person at random, so just doesn't not who enters first or anything like that. Just give it to us sometime before the match is over. Um, and here's the question. David Thomas has made top eight at two other Star City Games Opens. Yep. Uh, both standard, one earlier today slash yesterday, and one in Nashville last week. What archetype did he play in those events to both top eight finishes? Yep. Certainly showed uh, showed his chops there. Now in this legacy top eight, quickly, I mean, he's qualified for the Invitational. Probably great two tournament. Invitationals next year at the very least. Uh, yeah, and maybe he even has a buy at this point. I'm yeah. not sure. Top eight a lot of events. But... Make sure you get that answer in before this match is over. You don't have to be first, but it does have to be before the match is over, and we will choose one at random. Yep, and you will win six months of StarCityGames.com Premium, where you can read about Jerry Thompson's exploits as he uh, found his way all the way into the semifinals, maybe even further, who knows, Definitely. in this tournament. He'll have to break serve at least once against David Thomas, but if anyone can do it in this top eight, I think it's Jerry. And, of course, uh, some hints. If you want to find David Thomas's information, check, check out the coverage page, yep. check out past coverage pages all on SCGLive.com. You can see all about his previous exploits in standard. Definitely. So, yeah, let's look over the sideboard here as the players shuffle up for game number two. Okay, so David Thomas in his board has three Crows and Grip, three Spell Pierce, two Pyroblast, a uh, Red Elemental, a Sylvan Library, three Surgicals, and two Submerge. Now, we, we already got to see how these players sideboarded in the Swiss a little bit at the very least, so we'll see if anything changes. Uh, I believe in the Swiss, David Thomas sided in both the Pyros the Red Elemental Blast, and the Spell Pierces, if I'm remembering right. And we didn't see any, but I imagine you probably boarded it in the Cross and Grips, too, right? Right, I would think so. I mean, it deals with counterbalance and top. I mean, it seems fairly relevant to me. Right, maybe he didn't in the Swiss, but now that he's seen the deck list, see the full four of each of top and counterbalance, I can't imagine him not boarding those in. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Maybe that means he won't bring in some of the other cards. I, I really, once again, I mention this every time we've seen David Thomas <laughs> play today. I just don't like those stifles. I, th I think he should board those stifles out. Every time I've said that, he's kept them in every right. single time. Of course, he's a player in the semifinals and not me, but... True, we're in the booth. He's at the table, but I don't like the stifles either. We'll see if he keeps them in. Uh, stifle in that game, though, did counter the Vendillion click trigger. Yeah, so. that's true. So uh, I, I don't think we'll see the Temporal Spring uh, from David Thomas. Yeah, I think that will go out probably yeah. like in 90% of the matches he's played. <laughs> right. He will keep in the life from the loam. Might shave some lightning bolts. Probably doesn't need the full set here. I agree with that. Um, and in terms of his removal suite... Uh, yep. Also, now that, that he knows Jared has 24 lands, Days might not be quite as powerful either. Right. He might realize that Jerry will play around Days. We'll see about that one. But Jerry Thompson's sideboard said it before, we'll say it again. One Force of Will, two Cross and Grip, four Pyroblast, two Thrun, three Nihil Spellbomb, a Lightning Bolt, and a pair of Fluster Storms. Uh, now, last time he played against Rug, he sided out Force of Wills. We'll see if he does the same thing against the more aggressive version here. Are we sure he supported out Forces? I mean, I think he did. We didn't see any from him. Right, we didn't see any in a, a pair of pretty long games. Yeah. I, oh. I think it's even more likely to sideboard out force now because before there was like counterbalance and top yeah, the fight over Jace. and yeah Jace, but now there's no Jaces, no tops, no counterbalances. You're just gonna two for one yourself, right. and that's not what Jerry Thompson wants to do. Right. We'll definitely see Pyroblast, probably the Lightning Bolt, uh, but we will see. I think David Thomas is mulliganing. I believe Jerry seems content with his seven at this point. And I really do feel like Jerry's advantage in this matchup. We'll see how uh, things change after sideboarding, but. Earlier we saw him roll David Thomas. Yeah, two not so close games. But we will see. Uh, 
And Jerry Thompson also has access to a full four pyroblast. Do you think he'll put in all four here? Four would be a little ambitious, but definitely some number of pyroblasts. Right. We saw him use them to great effect in the last drug matchup, and I imagine he'll probably use them to good effect here. Does kill Delaware of Secrets, certainly counters a lot of crucial cards. It doesn't have Jace to kill, doesn't have counterbalance to kill like we saw last time around, but I think we'll see at least two in here from uh, Jerry Thompson. Yeah, I would expect, uh, like you said, at least two. Interesting to note, just like last match, we saw Jerry Thompson can cast Pyroblast off Grove of the Burn Willows. Mm, yeah, it's kind of like almost like he trapped his opponent. His opponent saw Grove up, thought he was home free. Pyroblast, yeah. Getcha. Jerry has been lighting opponents on fire all day today with Punishing Fire and Pyroblast. We'll yeah. see if he can do it a couple more times. He thought that Punishing Fire might be the card of the future, and it certainly has piloted him a long way. Yep. Let's see if he can make it any further. He's going to have to win the next two games to advance to the finals, though. They know he wants another trophy for his mantelpiece and his stretch toward player of the year. Ooh. Jerry plays land top. Very powerful. He just looks up at his opponent like, you got it? No? <laughs> All right, sweet. Land top. Yep. David Thomas chooses not to fight over the top. Uh, Jerry Thompson activates the top in his upkeep, sees Tarmogoyf. Brainstorm and I think Dismember. Yeah, Tarmogoyf, Brainstorm, and Dismember. Gonna leave, looks like Brainstorm on top, Dismember in the middle, Tarmogoyf on bottom. Oh no, switches it a little bit, puts Dismember on the top. Yeah, Dismember, Brainstorm, Tarmogoyf. So he wants Dismember to fight against any potential creatures this turn. I like to say a Delver of Secrets, for example. <laughs> Perhaps. Or a Tarmogoyf. David is foolish enough to play one out, although I think that's kind of a fool's gambit to play a Tarmogoyf at turn two. Yeah, when your opponent has Punishing Fires and the such in his deck, not too smart. Wisely chooses not to. Uh, Jerry tops at the end of David's turn and plays a Grove and ships. So half the combo assembled, and if I'm not mistaken, he has a pair of Punishing Fires in his hand. Yeah, I like Jerry's position a lot this game. Top Turn one top is going to give him a ton of card advantage to fuel up what's going on. Right. Uh, he's got Jace in his hand, got a lot of action to set, set up. It's possible David Thomas has a Crossing Grip to deal with that top, but even then I think Jerry's still got a ton of advantage out of it. Right. David Thomas with the Wasteland to deal with that Grove if he wants to, though does not do it yet. Probably going to wait for a Punishing Fire from Jerry. And also important to note, he has that Jace, so if David Thomas ever makes the mistake of tapping low or tapping out, if Jerry thinks he can resolve Jace, he's going to go for it. Yeah, I mean, David could force or, you know, have any variety of one-mana counter spells, but I'm sure he'd love to just stick that Jace and run away with the game. Yep. So Jerry Thompson, put, I think, puts a pair of Punishing Fires back there. All right. I see his, yep, looks at his top three cards. Looks at two fires he put back. I see his Fire, Fire, Tropical Island. Going to take the Tropical Island, leaving both the, or no, I guess he took one of the Punishing Fires. Yeah, I believe so. He's leaving himself with one Punishing Fire. Definitely going to shuffle the other away. Not a card you want to of. David Thomas brainstorms at the end of Jerry's turn. Kind of dig a little deeper. And he does have the Scalding Tarn to shuffle the cards he put back, puts back away, too, if he wants. Right. David Thomas does not seem like the kind of player to cast Brainstorm without a fetch. Very deliberate, methodical, getting maximum value out of this Brainstorm here. And there's a shot of the players. You see AJ Soccer and John Pennock standing behind Jerry Thompson, yes. watching their friend. <laughs> the group kind of all works together on a lot of the same decks. and Good friends. Uh, David puts down Tarmogoyf. It's great in Magic. It just builds friends for you, and that's certainly a great example of that. Right. Jerry kind of has a circle, and you know, he's hanging out with a lot of great people. Definitely. Plus, you have people to test with, build decks with, things like that. And really just awesome people to be around talk about anything. Jerry goes for Dismember on that Tarmogoyf. And Pyroblast cannot counter that. <laughs> oh, Dismember. Dismember, the black card played in the blue decks. And Jerry Thompson tops at the end step. Sees another Jace, Punishing Fire, and a land. And this time it takes the Tropical Island. Right. I have to imagine he'll probably draw the Jace too. He knows that David Thomas will have Pyroblast and Spell Pierces after board, so he'll be ready to fight those Jaces. Right, and be well and ready to have more Jaces too to overload. He already has one Jace, but a second after David directly dealt with the first would be huge. Uh, Jerry lays a Tarmogoyf there. And we'll see what David Thomas does to the Goyf. He does have a force of will. If he really wants to counter that, he'll, he can try. Uh, David taps Volcanic Island, and there's Spell Snare on the Tarmogoyf. So Tarmogoyf goes down for the count. Yep, Jerry lets that get countered without a fight. 
realizes that that, that that might not be the most important thing right now, now that the players have advanced into the late game. There's Tower Goyf down for David Thomas. So now David's one with the Goyf. I still feel like Jerry's advantage here, though, even though David is the one casting a Goyf. Right, Jerry with the two Jaces. Very powerful. And if he can ever land, and if he can ever land a counterbalance with Jason play, the game will be very hard for David to win. Or especially, yeah, this top in play, too. I mean, just right. the counterbalance is so strong. And then once he has to counterbalance top, he can just go Jace safely bounce your Tarmogoyf and be able to counter it on the way back down. Definitely. Looks like Jerry sees another Grove of the Burn Wills along with his Punishing Fire and Jace on top of his deck. So he will draw a Grove to protect the, or to rather have a second one to protect from Wasteland. And, and there goes Jace, lays the Jace. You have to imagine David Thomas is going to Pyroblast this. Yeah, I'm sure he couldn't Pyroblast that fast enough. And he will just see Jerry let that resolve and go for Jace number two next turn. Well, all he seems to have is a Brainstorm and Punishing Fire, so I think so. Yep, and that is what he does. Passes back. Yeah, Jerry doesn't really have a good way to fight Pyroblast from what I can see. He has one counter spell and his main deck is probably still there. Other than that. So now David Thomas with the Tarmogoyf. About to take a big chunk out of Jerry's life total. Oh, cross the grip on top. Now that is big. Very big. Now, hopefully for Jerry, he left the Jace on top so we can draw it and then shuffle away the cards he doesn't want. I think he did. But little does he know, David Thomas has a Force of Will and a blue card in his hand. So oh he'll man. be able to counter that Jace. Will we see the Revenge of David Thomas oh, here in the semifinals? And finals? a Pyroblast. David Thomas is primed to take advantage of that tempo. And like we were talking about earlier, Legacy is just so much about tempo. You get a card like Tarmogoyf out, it gets huge. You protect it with some counter magic. Right. Bada bing, bada boom. There's Jace off the top for Jerry. David cracks a Scalding turn. This will be another Pyroblast. Jerry will probably be forced to brainstorm here, search for... Some sort of counterspell. Seems he just doesn't have a counterspell to go find. Right, not much counters Pyroblast in this matchup after yeah, all. I mean, you can't find anything. Right, unless you boarded in Flusterstorm. Unless you boarded in Flusterstorm, that would be the one exception. You might also just need to brainstorm to find something. Right. All right, so David has Pyroblast. Maybe he's got Flusterstorm in his deck. I don't know. <coughs> I think if he brainstorms here, that means he probably does. Because that's the only thing he could trying, go find. I'm trying to look through his deck to see if I can see it in there. I didn't catch it in there while he was flipping through his deck, but it could just be hiding. Let's see. Shuffles him up. So how big is that Goyf right now? I see Plane. Gigantic. Uh, there's Planeswalker. There's n everything but Enchantment, I think. Oh, no, I, there might not be a Sorcery in there. Uh, looks like he sees Spell Snare, something else. And maybe there, yeah, you're right. Actually, I don't think there's a sorcery of all card types. So it looks like he's going to keep Punishing Fire and another blue card. is Punishing Fire, Spell Snare? I believe that's a Spell Snare. Maybe not, though. Jerry knows this Brainstorm is super important. Yep, this is his last chance to try and deal with that Tarmogoyf. Yep, Punishing Fire... No, and, he and he just concedes. Realizes he realizes he can't. Yep, sees that he's going to draw blanks, and that is that. David Thomas revenges, uh, avenges himself for Jerry Thompson's earlier victory. And although I think Jerry had the upper hand in the matchup, David kind of, uh, David just kind of yeah. drew a little better. And yeah, he had all the resources he needed. He had the pyroblast at the right time. Both pyroblasts.